morning. This is Tori uh, from Chapters in Seward, Nebraska. And as you can see, I am not at Chapters right now. I am at the Liberty House Bed and Breakfast and Antique Store. And behind me is our friend Pat Coldiron, who is going to be telling us about her upcoming book, all about the history and the stories behind Seward County. Hello, Pat. Would you care to share a little bit about yourself and about what you want to tell us today as our local author spotlight and as a stand-in for an actual author event in the time of Corona? Exactly, yeah. Um, thank you so much, Tori, for coming over. And this is a copy. We've got some of the books. And so I really appreciate the opportunity to introduce it to the mm -hmm. community and talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so title of the book. The title of the book is, this is a series published by Arcadia Publishing, mm -hmm. and it is called The Images of America, and this is Seward County. Mm -hmm. And we did dwell on, and I did visit each one of our 10 little communities. Okay, 10 communities in Seward County. What is the best story from, or oh, if you can narrow it down, your favorite story that you want to tell everyone? I can't, I can't <laughs> because um, it took several years to research research the book, mm -hmm. and this is not a sophisticated, in-depth history of pages and pages of the causes and the, and the whys and the where's, but it's a summary and it's a pictorial history, and so I didn't have a collection to start with, and so I had to go to every little community and visit them and try to find somebody with some history and, 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 and get into their collection of pictures. And it was just a, a wonderful thing of becoming enchanted with each little community. It, you just fall in love with them and the mm -hmm. stories and the wonderful mm -hmm. stories that are there. Oh, very cool. So when it comes to uh, choosing what went into the book, especially when it comes to the pictorial history, what was the editorial process for that? I have to tell you, that this took a couple years to research. And the book is 127 pages long, but I submitted 210. <laughs> so I know what the folks of Seward County, it's not my fault that everything's not in here. <laughs> I tried, I tried. Um, first off, I have to really, really thank um, our Seward County Historical Society over in Goner, and especially Diane Roran, she was just a treasure and she just quietly every time because I, I didn't know how to sort things after a little bit so i started going um alphabetically mm -hmm. so i started with b for crossing and then b and then cordova and on like that because i just couldn't figure out the criteria of how to proceed and diane roran out of the historical society was just always so calm and never failing mm -hmm. and what a great assistance and that leads me to share and to realize what an important part of the county our historical society in Goner is because mm -hmm. it's our icon archive mm -hmm. of all of our history and our story in Seward County Nebraska is just epic mm -hmm. I think I think it's I have had people come to stay here at my bed and breakfast from Denmark and from um, Germany mm -hmm. who bypassed New York and Los Angeles and came right here to stay because they wanted to see the heartland of America. I love to hear that, Pat, because I was going to ask, well, okay, so the history of Seward County, that's great for those in Seward County, but uh -huh. is there any broader impact? Of course, if people from exactly. all across the world are coming exactly. here. Exactly. And um, I'm working hard to develop more ways to share. And our little book here, our images of Seward County, will be upstairs in all the rooms um, so that when they're here, when people come, because they do come from all over the United States mm -hmm. and all over the world, and they come to Nebraska for various reasons. So it's mm -hmm. great. Um, what was okay now where where was where were we going here i'm talking about uh the epic story of seward county that it's interesting to everyone i just i can't believe some of the things and the other things that there were many reasons why the people came to seward county but it's so interesting is that they did not come here 
till about the 1850s. Seward County, and it was a, it's a square county of 576 square miles. <laughs> and um, when I went to Maui in Hawaii, they had a courthouse in 1830s, and they had ships, and they were populated, and they were busy. Um, in 1867, the year that we became a state and mm -hmm. a county, Isaac Singer was turning out thousands of sewing machines in New Jersey. Um, Sacramento, California had already been developed and the gold rush was going on. Mm -hmm. And nobody in Seward County laid here quiet and pristine and the Blue River was crystal clear and there mm -hmm. were clam shells and the clean rocks on the bottom and it was magical. Mm -hmm. And we had antelope and buffalo mm -hmm. and wolves and everything and the Native Americans occasionally traversing through. Mm -hmm. Just think how pristine and beautiful it was. Mm -hmm. And the people going from back east out to the west coast, um, they use a more commonly traversed route of about 60 miles north of us mm -hmm. along the Platte River. Mm -hmm. But then in 1862, the Homestead Act, Homestead Act was put into place. Um, the Civil War veteran soldiers, they were given land in lieu of cash money for their services because mm -hmm. the government didn't have any money, mm -hmm. just like today. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> and then, Political commentary coming to you live from Seward. <laughs> and then also, um, the railroads had come out here and bought up a lot of land uh, before they knew for sure the direct route that they were going to take. Mm -hmm. And so then they were trying to unload a lot of land. So they sent flyers to back east and they sent flyers and they recruited people from Europe and all over to come and come and mm -hmm. settle. So all of a sudden this little influx started and, and bless Jane Graff's heart, she's got a map of, of the first settlers mm -hmm. um, that came to Seward County and there was just a handful when they made their first election, when they voted on something, there were only 25 people that voted. Mm -hmm. And so then within a short, short time, uh, the people started coming mm -hmm. because of all these reasons. I can't imagine the hardships these people endured. This is part of the story that I got listening to mm -hmm. the other people and reading all the stories mm -hmm. um, from the first settlers. Because just think, they would come from a settled home, maybe back east in Ohio mm -hmm. or New York or Europe, and they would come out here and they'd maybe take a train to St. Louis, Missouri, and then they'd come up the Missouri River. Mm -hmm. And they'd walk out here 75 miles and they'd stake a claim Ooh. and they'd scratch a hole in the mm -hmm. side of a hill and live in a dugout. Mm -hmm or take some chunks of dirt and build a sod house. Mm -hmm. Or if they were lucky and lived uh, beside the Blue River or Plum Creek mm -hmm. or Beaver Creek, they were able to make a crude log cabin. So the hardships, the loneliness, mm -hmm. the prairie fires mm -hmm. were huge. And I'm thinking before, uh, before central air and before oh heating gosh. and yeah. whoo. And sickness and illness. Mm -hmm. And rattlesnakes were all over. And so the hardships that they endured mm -hmm. to take a chance on this prairie mm -hmm. was just mind boggling. And I'm getting very strong Little House on the Prairie vibes and thinking, oh, okay, so if you're a fan of Laura Ingalls Wilder, it sounds like there's a lot of real life stories to be heard. Oh, oh very much so, mm -hmm. of course. And um, I hope that I was able to touch like I said, this isn't a real in-depth book, but what is so important to me, what this book, the purpose that it serves is to maybe spur a little interest in our next generation. So they'll maybe mm -hmm. flip through it and maybe um, develop mm -hmm. a little bit of interest in our history because mm -hmm. our story, it, it's just epic. It is really mm -hmm. something. The things that folks don't know about Seward County are, did you know that Jacob Culver settled, he was one of the first settlers mm -hmm. in Milford. His son Henry Culver started Culver City, California. Um, 
the bottle the bottling works that he started down there in the Shogo uh, Springs mm -hmm. was a favorite. That water that was bottled there and shipped out was a favorite in Nova Scotia. And also that bottled water was sent to the Panama Canal for the workers down there. Um, From Milford, Nebraska. In Milford, Nebraska. <laughs> um, over in Gona, Nebraska, Julia, Juliana Steinheider Duncombe graduated, um, taught school. She graduated from Doan, but her degree was in astronomy and math mathematics. And she went to work for the U.S. Naval Academy and judged the sun and the moon and the stars in, in, in their locations and everything. And we did not even know this, um, that there were several um, scholarships given mm -hmm. in her name during the eclipse time here uh, for and especially geared towards young women mm -hmm. so that they could pursue a career in mathematics and astronomy. Oh, that's fun fantastic. Isn't this oh, wonderful? Wow. The things, mm -hmm. the stories that come from Seward County mm -hmm. that we aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. And maybe this little booklet will, will spur a little bit of interest. Absolutely. I have a hard time thinking it's not going to because right now I want to pick it up and read through it. <laughs> well, the other thing that I have to do, along with thanking um, Diane Roern and the folks out at the Historical Society, is thanking Sharon Hambeck and Carol Zach because every time I would get a lead, <laughs> all I had to do was hint, and those gals would come and mind the store here at Liberty House <laughs> so that I could get in my little blue minivan and go tear into the next little town. So it, it, I really want to mention that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so you say that this book is available here at the Liberty House. Yes. And where else can we buy that book? And of course, this book <laughs> is available at our wonderful chapters, books, and gifts, our independent bookstore here in Seward and over at the National Guard, Nebraska National Guard Museum. So, nice. And so you can get it at three places. I'd also like to mention, Tori, um, that these are not very professional, and they were done a little uh, time ago, mm -hmm. and so they are kind of homemade. But please go to the YouTube channel, Tall Grass Prairie Stories. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've interviewed some of our wonderful folks that are gone now, and it does tell some of our stories, and I intend to kind of keep doing that too. And also then, because of this book, mm -hmm. I'm developing little brown box road trips so that, and putting information in them mm -hmm. so that folks can take a Sunday afternoon drive in Seward County. Mm -hmm. So during the times when we're really not supposed to be going far afield, this is a perfect way to explore your own backyard and learn exactly. about some of the history. You can stay in your car and stay safe, but still have an enjoyable mm -hmm. afternoon. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Pat, for telling us about uh, Faces of Seward County and seeing uh, just a little snippet of what there is to explore and see and learn. And um, everyone, definitely you need to come and check out this book and check out the Liberty House while you're around.